possible today. And next up, uh, we're going to have Jonathan Chang, who's the IT chief engineer from NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory. He's going to be talking about how OpenStack's going to take us to Mars. So that's pretty cool. So let's welcome him out. Well, good morning, everyone. It's really an honor to be here. Um, I, I feel like I have the fortune of working at what I believe is one of the most innovative and exciting places in the world. It's a place where humankind attempts to discover the origin of life. It's a place where we dare mighty things. So here's my family portrait. <laughs> um, at NASA JPL, we've had a robotic presence on the surface of Mars since 1976, when the Viking landers and orbiters returned more than 50,000 images and mapped 97% of the Martian surface. Since then, we've delivered a number of robotic um, rovers of increasing magnitude of complexity to conduct scientific experiments on the surface of Mars. In 1997, we successfully landed the path, oh, I'm sorry, the Sir Sojourner runner, rover, the first mobile object mankind has ever deployed on the surface of another planet. Building on the success of Pathfinder in 2004, we successfully landed Spirit and Opportunity. Opportunity went on to conduct seven years of science and discovery, while the Opportunity rover is currently on its 11th year of active mission. Um, on the surface of Mars and traveled the distance of a marathon, 26 and a half miles. As you saw from the video, the latest rover, Curiosity, was a tremendous effort, an undertaking that required millions of lines of code and was a result of reasoned engineering thought and a great amount of calculated risk. So what is JPL? Well, we're a federally funded research and development center managed by the California Institute of Technology. We are a primary contractor to NASA. We are the leading U.S. center for the robotic exploration of our solar system and beyond. We are nestled in the foothills of Pasadena, surrounded by the Rose Bowl and residential neighborhoods. And we'll get back to that, why that's important later. Um, we operate a fleet of Earth-sensing satellites and investigate our rising sea levels, salinity in our oceans, the availability of water in our future, and understanding extreme events such as earthquakes, such as the, uh, the, the Nepal earthquakes and, and the hazards that that, that created. Uh, we study floods, volcanoes, we have many, many current Earth missions. We also manage the Deep Space Network, uh, NASA's international array of giant 70-meter radio antennas that supports interplanetary spacecraft missions, a few Earth-orbiting ones, and in the near future, human deep space flight. This is the low-density supersonic decelerator. We experiment in new technologies and develop capabilities for future missions. LDSD is a technology experiment that may potentially help us land humans on the surface of Mars. On June 28th, NASA's low-density supersonic decelerator project conducted the first shakeout flight of a new way of testing technologies that will one day be used to land heavier, more massive payloads on the surface of Mars. We used a large 34 million cubic foot scientific balloon to hoist a 7,000 pound test vehicle to an altitude of 120,000 feet. The test vehicle was then released from the balloon, spun up for stability, and a large solid rocket motor accelerated to over four times the speed of sound in an altitude of 180,000 feet, a condition very similar to the conditions it would see at Mars. 
Once we reach the correct speed and altitude, we despun the vehicle. And then we got a chance to test our new supersonic inflatable decelerator. The camera lens cover is deploy. We see that inflated very uniformly without disturbing the vehicle too much. And now we're seeing previously unreleased high definition, high resolution, and high speed video taken during the test. We used the supersonic inflatable decelerator to slow us to something closer to two and a half times the speed of sound. We use a balut to help deploy the new supersonic parachute. The balut is shot out the back of the vehicle at over 200 feet per second, and then we cut the balut free and it begins to pull the parachute off the back of the vehicle. As the parachute begins to inflate, we see one of the surprising aspects of this test, which is the early onset of tears in the parachute. We see where those tears began, how they propagated, and otherwise how the parachute behaved as it began trying to inflate behind this very blunt object moving two and a half times the speed of sound, punching a hole in the atmosphere, and creating an extremely turbulent, chaotic environment for the parachute to exist in. We now have a data set that we will use to prepare for two more tests beginning in June of 2015. So although the parachute deployed correctly, it broke up upon exposure to the 2,000 mile per hour winds. So many would consider this a failure, but the amount of information collected was analyzed and has since been corrected for the June um, deployment of the second LDSD saucer at the Pacific Firing Missile, Missile Firing Range in Hawaii. This truly demonstrates the ability to experiment, prototype, and learn in an extremely accelerated manner. And we are continuing to dare mightier things. The Europa Clipper mission will send a, sp a spacecraft in orbit around Jupiter's moon of Europa to perform a detailed investigation of the giant planet's moon. A world that shows evidence for an ocean of liquid water beneath its icy crust, which could host conditions favorable for life. We are also developing the Asteroid Redirect mission, a first ever robotic mission to visit a large near-Earth asteroid, collect a multi-ton boulder from its surface, and redirect it into a stable orbit around the moon. Once it's there, a crew of astronauts will explore it and return with samples in the 2020s. And this technology demonstration is an experiment to advance the new technologies and spaceflight experience needed for human mission to the Martian systems in the 2030s, as our president has mandated. This graphic kind of shows all the various technologies and experiments that we conduct, including the space launch system, landers on the surface of Mars, a future a sample return mission from Mars, um, all of our orbiters, and the Orion capsule. All these things will eventually allow us to carry humans to the surface of Mars. Kind of reminds me of the Apollo program. But meanwhile, back on Earth, um, our new orbiters have the capability for missions to collect multiple pe te uh, te terabytes excuse me, of raw data every day in magnitudes of 40 to 80 terabytes every single day of raw, unprocessed data. JPL is struggling with space, power, and the cooling to host the compute and storage needed to meet these demands. As I mentioned earlier, we are in a very small area in Pasadena and surrounded by the Rose Bowl and residential areas. We can't grow out of our data centers. Transporting the mass amounts of data from where it's collected to where it needs to be processed continues to be a challenge. You know, we're talking about 87 terabytes a single day. We need to process all that data in that same day, but moving that back to JPL is no simple feat. And our project lifecycle oftentimes requires us to buy infrastructure for the life of the mission before it's needed. We have a very CapEx-like model, right? And many times that hardware remains underutilized for a good duration of its lifetime. And by the time we do use it, its replenishment is near. So here's our OpenStack story. It's pretty simple. JPL needs an open and free technology that allows us to consolidate our underutilized infrastructure and make it easily available and provisionable by projects who no longer have the funding or resources available, while still preserving the capability for the missions 
that will need the infrastructure in the future. Just recall, the Opportunity rover was intended to be a 90-day mission, and now it's in its 11th year. So I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the community for truly supporting our mission and, and ask that you continue to support OpenStack because it is doing a, a wealth of good for NASA. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Jonathan. Wow. It's amazing what people are doing out there with OpenStack, just thinking, thinking large and experimenting. So.